Hello everyone, this is Bus Travel with another live event. And today we have a special topic for you, wine tourism and how it brought the business forward. You will learn how to understand customer behavior more deeply so that offers can be more attractive and more innovative. I'm happy to welcome Miguel Leal, founder of ML Private Tours from Portugal. Welcome Miguel. Oh, wait, give me a second. Your microphone is not switched on. And, and now? Oh, there, there okay. you are. Exactly. Hi, Hi, Hi everybody. There. Hola, as we say in Portuguese. Um, Hola. <laughs> welcome, everybody. Um, hope you can understand a little and, uh, and about wine and how important it is for the future, wine tourism. Yeah, I think this is a very, very uh, interesting topic. Um, maybe, Miguel, you can introduce yourself a bit to all our people watching here because it's always so interesting. I know we know each other and you're yes. always talking with so much passion. So tell us where does this, <laughs> this passion come from and what do you do? Well, um, so I decided to, in 2011, uh, after working with my, in the family business, I decided to create my own company and uh, i have a big passion for for wines and at that time i said why not join my passion in wines with uh, doing what i love is being with people and showing around and showing my country so i founded emil private tools in 11 and it's been from the beginning everybody was saying wine tourism are you crazy what's what's so special about it uh, and nowadays wine tourism I can tell uh, the experience here in Portugal, it's becoming more and more important. And now everybody's saying, oh, you're right. I, actually, wine is fun and why not? And uh, things are uh, moving. And uh, I'm glad I make this, this decision of okay. creating. That, that's, re that's really cool. So uh, you're from Portugal. And yes. uh, so this leads me right away to my question. Why is Portugal a must come tourist destination? And I know you're from the North. Why yeah. is it for the North? Well, um, Portugal, it's uh, above all, it's a country, friendly country, nice country. We welcome everybody as they were from the family. You know, if the, uh, there is always space for another one at the table. If you can come, uh, for instance, one of the things and This is why wine and gastronomy, it's so cultural, that all the business in Portugal, they are, uh, the last touch are made on the table, always. Mm -hmm. not, not on the office. And um, north, north of Portugal, it's where Portugal was born. Actually, it's the origin of Portugal. And it seems that even from the people that come here, they say that uh, it seems in the north people are, Although all Portugal is friendly, but they seem that in the north people are more authentic, more, you know, strong, more proud mm -hmm. of their culture. Okay. And uh, it's a safe destination. No problems. You can walk during day, during night, even in the big cities. You can walk, go for a dinner from your hotel walking. Nobody will bother you. Even now, it's the result of the COVID. We are now in June, opening the third and last phase mm -hmm. of the quarantine. Everything will be open. And it was one of the best countries in, Europe, in, in, in the world. Actually, it was the ace with the best results all over the world. So in terms of safety. So yes, mm -hmm. it's a, uh, and then of course the wine, the food, One of, it, it, everybody laughs when I say that it's one of the oldest countries in Europe. And because since our beginning in the 11th century, we didn't change our borderlines. So they are still from original. So that's something funny that people normally say, wow, I didn't thought about it. Yeah, great. You know, there's a lot to wine, food, gastronomy, beaches. There's a lot to discover. 
Yeah, I believe. I mean, I see on uh, on the newsfeed on on bus travel when you post your beautiful images from the landscapes, and I remember one thing when you posted this glass of wine and a little bit of of bread there, and I I really thought, well, sometimes it's the it's the simple things in life, you know, a, gla a good glass of wine, uh, depending on on what people like, and and the bread and having a good talk. Yeah, so I really really appreciate that you are really busy in our newsfeed. This is this is really cool because. I, I feel like I'm discovering Portugal already. So it's, yes, it's really it, cool. you know, it's been a, a funny thing. People start discovering again Portugal because uh, it's, it's becoming trendy. Portugal is becoming trending nowadays. Mm -hmm. So people more and more are coming and saying, what a, a beautiful country, friendly, and still has a good value. It's still a good mm -hmm. place to come because the prices are not uh, high. Yeah, that's, that's of course a, a good combination. I mean, a good spot to be, not too expensive, and having something good wine and bread. And, you know? This no, is something... it's, uh, for instance, you eat uh, in the restaurant, you can ask a bottle of wine from the house for five mm -hmm. euros. Oh, that's not too much. I think and, it, and, and the that. quality and the quality is amazing for five for five. It, it's really really good. Yeah, I believe I believe. Let's get to um, a little more because I I can talk with you for hours about <laughs> that really. Yeah. And you know I I don't know too much about wines, but uh, just hearing you talking about it makes me wanting a glass. <laughs> okay, it's the so. afternoon now. I won't do. But what do you think? Why um, the the thing is? Why did you specialize in wine tourism? And um, what are the, the main uh, specifications of Portuguese wine? Well, uh, about Portuguese wines, uh, we are the second country in the world, after Italy, with the most native grape varietals. We're talking about, in Portugal, 200 native grape varietals, only wow. from Portugal. Wow. And then it's, uh, it's typical for us, blendings. It's mm -hmm. part of our culture. So you can easily find a bottle from old vines, which vines more with sometimes 100 years old, especially from the Douro Valley, uh, with 40 different native varietals blended. Wow. Wow. That, that's a, that's uh, interesting. I didn't know that. <laughs> you know, and speaking the names that you never heard about it, like Toriga Nacional, uh, tinta Roriz, uh, Tinta Amarela, Tinta Cão, 200, mm -hmm. and in terms... And you know them all? <laughs> of course not, it's impossible. <laughs> Nobody knows it. Nobody <laughs> knows it, you know? That's why even the producers in these old vines uh, blended the, on, the, on the back level, they never put it, mm -hmm. the, because there isn't enough space to put all. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. And, and how did you get your passion for the wines? Well, first of all, I'm a third generation uh, winemaker from my family. Because mm -hmm. my family, my grandfather and my father, they used to have a property here in the north, in the Vinho Verde area. Okay. And, and most of people don't know Vinho Verde, the name, but if I say Alvarinho, everybody knows about it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember uh, from very, very child experience, I remember in, in being in, in the harvest, picking grapes, being in, the, um, being in the winery, stomping the grapes and bottling. So it's, mm -hmm. it's a part of me. And uh, that also, it's a part of family for me. You know, it's, uh, yeah. it's, it's a very passion family. You know, I remember the experience. And wine is passion. Mm -hmm. Above all, it's a kind, uh, and it's being crazy for people. In it, even when they say, "Oh, I don't like wine," I don't. In in the most funny port wine, everybody says, "Oh, it's so sweet. I hate it." I know, and it's funny that being one day with me, at the end they say, "Oh, actually, I love port wine." Yeah, some, you know, sometimes you know. Yeah, I, I totally got you. You know, <laughs> it's uh, it's very important uh, for the people because. We already speak about it more and more. It's fancy to be with a glass of wine on the hand, mm -hmm. meaning that, oh, these people knows wine, fancy, you know? Yeah. But, but most of the people, they, they are with a glass of wine, but they don't nothing about it. That, that's really true. Because, simply because they say, oh, mm -hmm. it's funny. 
Like, <laughs> but uh, it's like everything. It's a, it's a learning yeah. process. But if you can go to a winery, uh, talking with a winemaker, seeing the terroir, uh, the different tastings, the people there explaining what is the different, and you, you mm-hmm. start developing your taste and saying, yeah. oh, actually, I love this one. I love that wine. Because the trend in the market normally is people go for, for the magazines that make the reviews, 95 mm-hmm. points, yeah. 96. And they say, oh, if it says 96, it should be good. But are they really mm-hmm. appreciating? Or, or because someone classified yeah. that wine. And you have to say that, uh, always remember, he gave the classification according his own taste. Yes, there's difference mm-hmm. in swine. Everybody has his own taste. And you should be, not be shy if you like cheaper wine. Why not? <laughs> well, to be, to be honest, it, it, if, it, I, if it, I would, uh, I've been in a, in a position once um, that I had, had a wine tasting. And well, the middle class wine was fine for me. But uh, when they come, came on with uh, some barrique wines, I was like, okay, that's not mine. Yeah, but it's the best. And I said, not for me. Not for me personally. That's, you know? that's a real point, you know, because someone says it's the best. No, it's the best exactly. for him. Or the most expensive, you. maybe. So you should follow. <laughs> but here's a secret. Normally, the, the better wines are not the most expensive ones. For people that yeah, know that, it. That's always good to know. I mean, yeah. It's the medium range. The medium range, you can find amazing values. Mm-hmm. Bargain sometimes, yeah. you know. One of the, my uh, passions is going for the wine stores and looking and always looking for the bargain. They say, oh my God, this is a yeah. good value. You know, that's why important wine tourism, it's important for people to travel around the, um, around the world mm. in the wineries to check because this is a way they will develop their yeah. taste. They will become and, more knowledgeable. And, and this is addictive because you go for the first experience mm. in, the, in the winery, wine tastings, and then you want more and more yeah. and more and more and and this develops why uh, one tourism is becoming so important yeah you know for instance i will tell you just in the case of the united states because it's the biggest wine market in the mm. world where people pay more for a bottle of wine so wine tourism represents 20 thousand million travelers wine travelers that's enough. In a revenues, 2.5 billion euros a year. Mm-hmm. In- so uh, people that uh, travel for wine destinations and wine tourism, it's people that uh, pay. They, don't, they really want to go and uh, taste wines and learn. Mm-hmm. They pay. It's, it's a niche market, but it's growing. It's becoming... Because nowadays also, and this is very important, when tourism nowadays, it's not only about wine tastings. There's more. Because uh, uh, the wineries are preparing themselves beautiful hotels mm. inside, where you can say, you saw that picture, the suite, a private suite with sweet private yeah, swimming pool, yeah, in the meaning yeah. of the vineyards, you know? Yeah. It's, it's all part of an experience where you can make your own wine, being wine winemaker for a day. You have a spa. So it's all a part of the wineries that are ready to to welcome you for one day, two days. You, of course, the wine is important, Mm. but also it's more nature, being with nature and all all that uh, represents, you know? Yeah. I understand. Um, yeah, this, this image that you uh, that you talked about, I've seen it, and I just wanted to pack my clothes, get my suitcase, and oh, here we go. Yeah, it's. Uh, I believe this is something really, really special. I think nobody experienced something like this uh, before. And uh, well, this this would be a question from my side now. Um, mm. What what makes your tours, for example, so special? Or if anybody would like to to get into that niche market, because I don't know how how uh, uh, busy it is actually. What would you suggest? What what's what makes it special? What should people do? No, uh, um, it, it, most of all, uh, it's be- when I, I talk with the agencies that I work with, we try always some questions that I make. If the customer mm-hmm. likes red wine, if the customer likes white wine, 
more sweet, more dry wine. Mm. Because then, and then, because all the Mayak tours are made individually, so mm -hmm. according to each customer. So, what we try is really to introduce them to the wine, really wine business, and a wine is, and they will try to develop their taste for the future. Uh -huh. They will become more knowledgeable. So, it's very important to adapt, because this has to be done with passion, because if you are showing, touring with people and you don't nothing about wine, you can't, it's not the same thing for the customers. It really mm -hmm. isn't. And they will say, oh, it was another tour. But if you are prepared with the tour, trying to adapt to the wineries to their tastes, oh, it's going, mm -hmm. they will love it. And of course, it's uh, proof that the wine is connected with the experience. And of course, if they taste the wine after in their house, after tasting in a winery, the wine will be completely different. Mm -hmm. Yeah, understandable. Absolutely. So, so it's, this, uh, yeah. it, it's their people that do the standard tours, you know, cheaper ones one day, yeah. that, that they taste cheap wines and everybody join on the bus and move around. Mm -hmm. And at six, they are at hotel. But honestly, yeah. if you want a real wine experience, that's not the best way to do it. Mm. So you, it should end, be. Sorry. Yes. No, I didn't want to interrupt you. Go on. Uh, it should be. This is, of course, if you have passion in wine and you want to learn. Mm -hmm. Because if you're not a wine lover, okay, you could pass in the wine because the landscapes are always beautiful. But it's not the same thing. Yeah, that's true. That's true. When, when somebody, for example, now books a tour at your uh, company, mm. at ML uh, Private Tours, uh, how do you start that? Do you, do you ask the people uh, what is their experience that they had already or what they expect? How do you, how do you start? Yeah, uh, there's several questions. First of all, uh, the kind of if, the, the, um, if they like the red wine, if they like white wine, if they like a little drier, more fresh, younger, mm -hmm older because we are in portugal it's the port wine region if they like port wine or not if they want to visit port wine wineries if they are the if they prefer a lunch in a winery with mm. a wine tasting or lunch in the fancy restaurant the boat rides it's very important because because each customer for us is independently mm. so each one deserves his own experience so we try to adapt and try to go follow his expectations. Mm -hmm. That's why each customer for us, it's one customer. Yeah, and it's, this makes it in the end unique. Yeah? Unique. I think if, uh, if I just imagine I come there and it's not like, hey, this is tour A, this is tour B, uh, but being asked like, hey, what do you want to do? What's, what's, what are you interested in? What do you know already? I would like to show you something uh, no, that for you instance, don't know, for uh, example. Yeah? Like I told you, I don't wear a watch. Yeah. Because it's not me that make the hours, it's the customer. As long as they want to be we, uh, uh, moving around, touring around, if they want to change, no problem. We are here to make your experience of Portugal the best as possible. That's really, really great. That's really great. Uh, and I think this can be a, a huge success, of course. I mean, you told me already, um, we're specializing on this niche, brought your yes. business forward, right? Yes, yes, because uh, first of all, it's a niche market, but the most important thing is passion. Working I know you with have passion. <laughs> you <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> no, I believe this niche markets in tourism need to be done with passion people. First of all, because it's customers that are paying. Mm. And people that are, uh, can afford it. So they are paying for a different experience. Mm. And I can tell you, your tour can be a wonderful day. If the wine and the food is awful, mm. the, the, you, they, will, they will say it was a bad day. Yeah, absolutely. It all needs to, to fit together. Absolutely. So it, uh, and uh, that's why it's, uh, working in wine tourism is not for everybody. Yeah, I believe. Sure. I believe. Yeah, but as long as you have people there um, that are like you, that really, well, how, it sounds mean or bad, they have the wine in their blood. You know, they, they live that. Uh, 
You know, then, then you, you really can be passionate about it and, and really make people passionate about it. I think this is a very interesting thing because yes. isn't it so sometimes people come, they don't have any idea um, or, well, the, the wife said, hey, we have to do that once or so. And I, I truly believe when they leave because of, of your personality, for example, um, and, and what, what you can yes. tell about it, uh, they, they will just be leaving happy and, and come back again. You know, sometimes they say that uh, they are paying, but it seems that I'm having more fun than them. <laughs> That's always good. <laughs> so as, <laughs> it's, it's not a job you're doing, right? You do what you love. No, it's, it's a lifestyle. Yes, you're right. That's, it's a that's lifestyle. really cool. That's For really sure. cool. And I see here already, um, we have some questions. Mm -hmm. So just an information yes. for everyone here. Below uh, or on the lower part of your screen, you see the uh, Q&A section. You can ask your questions in there. It's always a little easier uh, than doing that in the chat. But if you prefer the chat, you can do that as well. Or you raise your hand and you can talk directly here and uh, ask your questions right away. Yeah, so let's start with the first question we have here from Christopher Sandeman. Or Sandeman. Um, what's the age demographic you cater to? Are you seeing bookings coming uh, in for, for the next month? This is first part of the question. Uh, no, not yet. Because uh, with this COVID, um, this, we are still people, we are still waiting mm -hmm. to open. Of course, uh, here in Portugal, uh, the third stage will start now in June. So uh, the wineries will open, the mm -hmm. hotels, but it's still too early to say what will be mm. this year. I'm expecting probably maybe for September, October, something. Because we need to see, because we are not also dependable of our borderlines. We are dependable of the other borderlines and where they open. And if people are, if they want to travel now, if they are afraid mm. of traveling, because it, it, there's a study saying that 40% uh, of people mm -hmm. will travel after one month. So, but it's still too early to say yeah. what happens. It's always the thing we need to wait for in the end. It's not uh, all our decision. But people will decision. travel. People will travel. People are uh, tired of being at home. They want to move. They want to be outside. They want. But uh, it's a thing that we are not... We are prepared, Board of Tourism is prepared, the campaigns, mm -hmm. uh, everything. But we still need to see how people, the, cons the, the customers mm -hmm. will react. Of course, of course. In, in this space, we yeah. still have to wait. And let's get to the next question here. Um, mm -hmm. Are your uh, customers more experienced wine drinkers or do you find they're more uh, novices? Um, and your products, more education or more experience? Uh, good question. Good question. Uh, I have it in terms of knowing people, if they are starting or if they have uh, knowledgeable, I have both. Mm -hmm. I have both cases. Uh, because Portugal is trendy, they come and they say from friend to friend, oh, you're going to Portugal, you have to go to the Douro Valley wine region. You have to, it's amazing there, the valley, the wines mm -hmm. and... Uh, and it seems in the beginning they, they don't know so much. But then at the end they say, hmm, actually Portuguese wines can be good. Yeah. I will try it. So, and of course, we have the experienced ones that sometimes uh, book me for three or four days to go to different wine regions. Mm -hmm. So it depends. Yeah. We have both. That's, that's cool. So for, for each company uh, or agency, for example, that wants to send their customers to your place, you have, every, have something for everyone, right? Yes. Uh, just need, uh, that's, that's why important that uh, talking, knowing the most information mm -hmm. as possible for, so I can prepare uh, the, a tour. If, if they say, oh, this customer knows about it. And I say, okay, so this mm -hmm. has to be this kind of wineries that special wineries being with a winemaker. If there is a people that don't know something so much and they want to learn, of course, I can go to a more fun winery, mm -hmm. more relaxed, not so intense. Mm -hmm. Of course, of course. Um, next question. Um, 
have you ever tried offering public tours or only private bespoke tours? Would be interested to hear if uh, there is a demand in walk-up free cell market. Well, uh, I only do private because it's a philosophy that I have because uh, I love being with people and I love to talk with them, learn for them to have the most uh, experience explaining the wines, the landscapes, the vines. And of course that in big groups or massified, it's not the same thing. And in the massified, people just go there for tastings, mm -hmm. just passing by. They really don't are not uh, interested in knowing so much yeah. about it and uh, just moving around, you know? Of, and for me, that is not passion. That is not uh, the same thing. But yes, there's market for, there's market for both, for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, but as you already said before, for you, it's more the, the personal the contact passion. thing. Yeah. The and contact so, with yeah. people, exactly. Yeah. So, okay, that's, that's all good. Um, and I, it's understandable. And I, I would prefer that, for example, <laughs> to be honest. Um, I know, it's, uh, I know sometimes <laughs> it's, all, it's the question of the cost. Of course. of course, it's more expensive, but you need to think you are paying for quality of services mm -hmm. and paying for someone who really is focused on you and, and is really that's giving it. your the best. That makes it's it better. 100% for you. Yeah. So you can ask all the questions you can do. You can ask everything. In the group, massified group, cheaper one, you will not be focused the same thing. Mm. I believe. So we have somebody who wants to talk to us. Um, Michele Saracino, I hope I spoke that right. So yeah. I give you the permission to talk. Um, sure. And so let's switch your microphone on. Michele, can you hear us? Hi. I can hear yeah, you. Yeah, sure. That's cool. Great. So, what would you like to tell us? <laughs> yes, very interesting. Thank you, Michael, for uh, giving us uh, this uh, precious information about uh, wine tourism. Uh, um, I used to work as a travel agent and many years in Italian markets, even I'm Italian originally, even I'm based in the UK since 10 years. So um, hopefully in the south of Italy, where I'm from, exactly Apulia, we produce also very good wine. So I understand your uh, needs, your uh, exactly, Michael, your uh, the, the plus that you adopt to to produce a very good tour experience for your customers in Portugal. Uh, of course, I love Portugal, which is a beautiful land. Um, unfortunately, I've never been uh, to do um, a tour guide also. Uh, and uh, I understand that at the moment, due to the COVID, probably uh, also is a need to, to plan, to organize, to propose a, a private tour experience rather than a big group. Yeah, experience. definitely. So, yeah, um, except I think Tempranillo is uh, Spanish wine or it's Spanish, isn't it? It, it is. It is. Uh, it's, uh, let's call it, it's originally from Spain and it was brought to Portugal. But in Portugal, it has two different names because in the <laughs> north, it's called Tinta Roriz and in the south is Castellan. Okay, lovely. Um, have you got some examples for the, um, because I suppose, of course, is more the English markets in, rather than Italian for you in, important it, because it's uh, it, it is mostly, but uh, I can prepare. Of course, I'm open to Europeans, obviously, and uh, we can. Of course, the language in Italian it has to be in English, <laughs> but yeah, uh, but the rest is okay. No worries. Okay. Okay, um, so um, if we think ahead, for example, for uh, um, you know, autumn season, perfect. It's the which best. Is, it's which it's, is, I suppose, is very good. It's yeah. perfect to come. So you should think st September, October, because you can still uh, see the harvest. Okay. Okay. And you can see one in very uh, good uh, important thing, ma mainly in the Douro Valley, 
because it's still very traditional to stump the grapes by feet. Oh, lovely. It's ancient. And you can see yeah. that. Wow. Yeah. Ancient, ancient traditions. And in some wineries, you can even go there and stump okay. it. Nice, nice. I used to do it when I was a child, yeah, because we haunted small <laughs> land, but it's just in the south, but it's just for yeah, us. We... It's just for, you know, we don't sell because it's Here so... Here we go, see? Yeah. <laughs> so. You see, here you go, what I'm saying, it's all passion. Yeah, yeah definitely. And re 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 remembering family things. And wine is that. Wine in food, wine in it's food, all yeah. about families. Ex experience. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So are you able to show us in the future some proposals? And uh, how can we do have well, some slides? How can we get? I, I, I try to find you on LinkedIn, of course. You can see my uh, website okay. if you yeah. want to, a and then just send me an email because, like I said, it's all private. I, I don't have a fixed yeah, price. At the end, it all depends of uh, the days you want and the way you you want to do okay. it. Okay. One thing, that because it's all tailor made. Yeah, yeah, it's no, all I tailor -made. The product. So I used to work for as a travel agent for ten years. Another. 15 years in commercial uh, sector in tourism, in tour operators. So I understand mm -hmm. what you mean. Mm -hmm. um. Perfect. Well, I would like okay. to, to mention, um, <laughs> Miguel will be- Also, Marcus, uh, thank you very much to organize oh. it. Oh. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> it's my, it's thank my you. pleasure. Ciao. Ciao, Michele. Uh, Ciao. One thing I would just like to, uh, to mention is um, that uh, we will have our digital trade fair now, end of June, and Miguel will attend as well. He uh, will have his own booth there. And uh, of course, wh whenever there's any uh, uh, slides or uh, anything uh, that, that you would like to have, feel free to join Bus Travel. Yeah, you can at any time join the trade fair um, and download uh, all materials that uh, Miguel will upload afterwards then um, to, uh, to your computer. So you have everything uh, in there. Yeah, this is just an offer from our side. You can um, at any time join there and uh, get in touch with Miguel. He's a, he, as you have seen today, he's a really cool guy. He knows what he's talking about. And if you want to work with somebody who has really passion, you should do. Yeah, this is just uh, um, information from my side. And uh, here, um, okay, yes, we will, of course, um, uh, we will post this uh, interview here later on. Uh, we'll be online tomorrow at uh, the bus travel page and on your page, I think, as well. I'll send it over to you. Um, you can you post it there uh, together with the website. So this uh, will all be shown there. Here we have uh, Luis Rodriguez. Hi, Miguel. Hi, Marcus. Hello. This is Luis from Portugal and I'm launching my own private tour company. So we're going to be good competitive partners, I hope. My question, <laughs> Miguel, do you think that private tours will have some uh, advantage rather than regular group tours because of social distance to avoid contact with other people? Well, uh, like it's proven, it's said, it, it's in, in the, the foreign tourism, everybody's speaking about it, that in the, for the moment, it will be private. Everybody will be more in private because of safety reasons. So families, group of small friends. Mm -hmm. And it, it's uh, everybody's saying that in the, in, in the industry that mass tourism is going to take a while to return. Mm -hmm. Remember so, one thing, because there's a crisis, and not everybody will have the means to start traveling again. You know, only some part of the, mm -hmm. the population that has the money that they will true. pay to be private. That's really good, yeah. That's true. So, are there any more questions, guys? <laughs> we are open. Um, so, okay, here I see Christopher. Um, I have to disagree, we're seeing good bookings and open again this weekend in Berlin. So you're from Germany. Um, so Great, yeah. great. <laughs> yeah, Christopher, maybe um, can you, uh, would you like to talk to us? I think that, that might be easier if you would like to do that, of course. Um, and I would just, yeah, okay, you're raising your hand, that's perfect, so I'll let you in. Great, great. <laughs> I, think I think that's easier, it's always nicer to talk. Of course, because, you know, of course. I have bad eyes and I'm reading all the time, so let's talk. 
<laughs> That's great. That's hey, it. gentlemen. Hi, guys. Thanks for being here today. Really appreciate that. Hello. Hi. Hi. Welcome. Hi. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so we 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 have a we have a back office in Berlin, but we're in 20 different cities in in 12 countries, uh, mm -hmm. including Porto and Lisbon. And um, and what we're seeing, uh, especially for our age demographic, which tends to skew a bit younger, uh, sort of let's say uh, 20 to 30 year olds, uh, that um, they're just a lot less concerned about about getting sick. Um, yeah, it's not exactly. That's much of a concern for them and. Uh, uh, and our bookings are are coming in. Of course, we have a very flexible cancellation policy right now to help encourage that. Um, but we were kind of amazed. I mean, we were much like yourself, Amiga. We're thinking more towards fall. And in fact, we've we've planned our revenue to be zero, really, until next Easter. Um, and of you know, using government subsidies and loans to support through till then. But we've been absolutely amazed by just in a couple of weeks how quickly things have have really changed. And That's good news. You know, tourism it, coming back and, 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 and tourism within the EU zone, especially for these under 30 year olds. Yeah, you, you're right. You know, it's part of that. Uh, it said that uh, they will start travel as soon as they can. The, the younger ones mainly because they, they simply don't, uh, they don't care. It has to say, right. oh, I'm young and they will start traveling. Well, they're, less, know, they're uh, less risk averse. They're, they're less afraid. Yes. They're, more, they're, they're immortal, right? When you're 21 and you've got a beer in your hand, you can... Yeah. But, <laughs> but, but, but actually, that's good news. If the things are starting moving, I, I'm really happy and I'm glad things yeah. are moving. Well, that's the reason why I was asking before about open uh, kind of public walk-in tourism. Because I could imagine that a private demographic, which tends to skew a little bit older, sometimes are because are, they can afford that you know higher cost experience clearly yes. a great benefit you know in that smaller group but but that, that <clears throat> older demographic is less likely to come back quicker and the younger That's demographic, it. the walk-on demographic because we we do tours in in Porto uh you know we're not right now but when we start yes. back up again and and we you know we take people to uh to Gaia and, and bring them to the Gavish uh for you know wine tastings and such and there are a lot of people who have not thought about it before, but at the end of a two-hour experience with us are asking us, hey, that was amazing. I, I, I just discovered a passion for wine. I didn't know I had. How do that's I get it. up to the euro? And, and, but that person, that person, you know, that's, that's, you know, it's five, six different individuals a day who aren't traveling together who would all pay 50 euros ahead to come along on a, on a bus trip up and back or... And that's what I'm trying to figure is, can we take these people who come on a, a, a day walking tour of Porto and convert yes. them into being passionate Portuguese wine drinkers within a day and then cross sell them onto other experiences like yours? Yes, they can. Yes, it's possible. We can talk about it and sure. make a, a little brainstorming about it. But yes, of course it is. Great. Well, I'll definitely follow up with you after this. And, and once again, Marcus, and Gera, thank you very much for being here today. Really appreciate thank it. Thank you. Thank you for oh, participating. <laughs> thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. So, okay. Now, uh, we have more questions in here. Um, let's see. Let's start. Oh, there's a lot. Um, so here we have um, Obrigado for the interesting uh, conversation. Portugal became a popular destination for Israelis and also for LGBTQ community. Mm -hmm. As a tour operator, do you work with B2B? Are you in contact with boutique, winery hotels, any recommendations for central or less uh, area? Uh, you're welcome. Uh, so I don't discriminate everybody. You're, everybody is welcome. I treat them all the same. There's no difference for me. And yes, there's a lot of amazing boutique wineries. There's a small producers. There's a lot of picnics in the middle of the vineyards, uh, uh, boat, enjoying the Dodo Valley from a boat, enjoying a lunch on the boat, enjoying the mm -hmm. landscape. There's a lot of uh, things that is possible to do. It's just a question of developing the experience mm -hmm. you want. Yeah. And, uh, and the other question, do you uh, work B2B as well? Yes, yes. I think it's, it's interesting. You, you see, 
people are getting already into it. They, they want to see you and talk to you more. This is what I really love here. And uh, yeah, this is uh, quite cool. And um, I have uh, another question from uh, Janja. Um, I saw that you all, uh, do also oil testing. Yes. Yeah? Something, yes. something else in your portfolio that, that you offer? Yes, olive oil uh, tastings. Yes, I do. And uh, it's quite funny because also, again, people don't know about it. All the Portuguese olive oil. But I can tell you that we are in the market and we are winning a lot of gold medals in the international mm -hmm. competitions. So it's a small, it's two parts of Portugal in the north, near the Douro Valley in, in, in Alentejo. But yes, I can arrange a small, in a small producer, lunch with them. They receive you like family. You can make tastings. They will explain to you about the olive oil. Mm. Something real, authentic. Yeah. Okay. That, that's cool. Uh, so, uh, do you see Indians visiting Portugal? Another question. They are, they are coming here. Yes, they are coming. Yes. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as, as I know everybody is welcome uh, at yours. I absolutely know that. that that's really cool. And uh, so we have another question from uh, mm. Captain uh, Uptal Das. Um, do you see an increase in road trips, close-knitted family or uh, friendly outing, vis-a-vis -vis flying domestic or international? Uh, it's growing, the, yes, it's uh, making their own driving around, yes. It's, uh, although I don't recommend in the wine regions like the Douro Valley, I don't recommend to make your, your driving yourself because uh, normally people believe that the wine regions are like Napa Valley plain, mm -hmm. you know, and they say, oh, I can drive around it, go. No. Forget it, the Douro Valley, it's mountain roads, narrow roads, it can be scary driving there and another thing if you are in the wine region and you're driving you cannot taste the wines because you have to drive exactly that's a good point <laughs> so normally what sometimes people do they ha they have their own car and they drive around but in the wine regions they stop the car and they hire like a person like me to yeah. drive them around what's a, what a good it's a good choice I mean, it is. what does it bring you to, to go there and not being able to, uh, to taste? I mean, doesn't it's make off, any sense, I can right? tell you from the customer experience that they say, oh my God, I shouldn't be driving here. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, I believe, I believe. Yes, yeah, it's, it's always, it's tricky. And I mean, why not when you're going uh, on a vacation and if you, when you do something like this, enjoy, take somebody with you who knows what to do, where to go, and you don't have to think about anything else than enjoying. And there's an important thing in the, in the, in the experience in the wine. Uh, relax after a good lunch in the winery. Yeah. Stay a little in the, enjoying the sun, enjoying the vineyards, not having mm -hmm. a rush. You know, hey, let's move to another place. No. Mm -hmm. wine, in the wine region, it's time for you to relax, to enjoy the wine. Exactly. You have time. Exactly. Cool. It's nothing like active uh, holidays. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have to go there. We have to go there. No, no I think no, this no. is completely the opposite. And I think, yeah, I think this is, is, a, is a great thing to do. Absolutely. Um, we have another question here from uh, mm -hmm. Lizani Smith. My name is Lizani and I own a business called Wild Wine Experience in South Africa. Okay. People definitely enjoy the, uh, the personal touch more than simply factual information about wine, of course. However, what people do live uh, is the method of how to taste wine to really get the aroma flown through every sense. Miguel, do you have a set way or steps you teach people on how to taste wine? Yes, I have it because uh, I also have a wine degree. So for that thing to, to really know what to explain people how about it. And um, yes, there are some things, some secrets that people don't, don't really imagine. And sometimes I just say, close your eyes. It's, sometimes it's just closing the eyes and the, the, the effect of the wine is different. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and the funny thing is people are influenced. If there's someone already in, in, the, in the side saying, well, this has some characteristics, you know, this has uh, uh, like uh, apple, 
flavors, mm. or these are like uh, chestnut, and th that will influence your brain, and you start, you'll start saying, oh, actually it is. So there's tricks, obviously there's things to, because yes, nobody uh, born uh, understanding wine. It's a method with time. So uh, the visiting the wine region is important in uh, knowing more and upgrading your uh, touch. Mm. And, and I can tell you from my experience, the more I know, the more I want to know. And one of my things when I travel, my, my goal is to travel from all the wine regions in the world exactly to know the difference mm -hmm. to know what's this different from the regions i'm used to it what is the grape varietal how is their method mm -hmm. it's a science i can say that wine more and more it's it's a science that's really interesting Ah, Lisani answered here. Yes, uh, those secrets. That's what makes it great. Um, obrigado. Maybe I can <laughs> invite you on Zoom as guest in uh, one of my wine tastings. Sure. That's cool, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> this will be very entertaining, I believe. Absolutely. Yeah. See about what wine is in all the, the wine yeah. atmosphere. This is it. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's, that's really cool. Yeah, people, get in touch with Miguel. You see? It never gets boring talking about wine. And, of course, <laughs> talking to Miguel. I mean, this is <laughs> fashion people are always uh, the best people to talk to. Um, guys, I don't see any questions more here. So um, I think all questions have be been answered. Um, just the short one from my side. If you own a travel business, uh, take a look at, at Bus Travel join our trade fair the digital trade fair because we can't meet at the moment i would love to uh, to see everybody uh, on all the trade fairs but uh, it's not possible so we just set up our virtual trade fair where you can meet uh, miguel as well and uh, if you have any questions just let us know get in touch with miguel get in touch with me we will be happy to talk to you at any time yeah so this had been the, the short one from my side miguel Thanks a lot for talking. It, sure, I'm really, it was I'm a really, pleasure. really happy. I loved it. I really loved it. And I learned something again about wines. Uh, I really sure. need to, to visit you. <laughs> it's, it's really uh, uh, on my bucket list for sure. And uh, yeah, thank you. It was a pleasure. And uh, I hope you all learn a little about wine tourism. And now it's becoming more and more important. And uh, my doors are open. When you want to come, let me know. It will be a great as the Portuguese way to receive. You're all welcome. Perfect. That's great words till the, uh, for the end of this of this meeting here of this interview. It was great talking to you. I will contact you uh, in a bit. And uh, yeah, people, it was great to have you with us. Hope you enjoyed. Stay safe. Have a great day. Have a great week ahead. And see you soon again. Thank you. Thank bye you. bye. Bye bye.